I'm filming this on Patrick's Day, so it felt particularly appropriate to have a glass of Bailey's while I was doing this one. And salted caramel flavour too. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am bringing you a very special rendition of Books and Brews. In this, I generally pick out three books that have a kind of a similar theme. And today, because it's St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to do books that are written by Irish authors that are set in Ireland and that I have read recently and really enjoyed. I have also put together a little bit of Bailey's while I'm going to read this. So this is kind of like a drunk or tipsy um, books and brews. Let's see how this one turns out. So, as I said, there's going to be three books that we're going to talk about. And the first one I am going to talk to you about is The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagidar. I read this one back in January. I think it was one of the earlier books that I had read in the year and I absolutely loved it. So this book is about Nishat, who her parents are Bangladeshi and they have come to Ireland to give her and her sister Pretty a better chance at life than they would have had back in Bangladesh. Nishat is in transition year, which is a year that we have in Ireland after your junior cert, which is one of the state exams that students do. It's kind of seen as a DOS year, but I would explain it more as a year that you can take a lot of self-development and personal growth. You can improve on a lot of skills that you have gotten that you want to maybe bring to the workforce. You can learn what kind of work you want to do through doing a little bit of work experience. And one of the aspects of Transition Year that I really enjoyed was your mini company. Nishat decides to set up a mini company based around henna designs because she really enjoys doing henna. And it is a part of her culture that she really wants to bring into her life here in Ireland. So she sets up her henna business, but also there is a new girl in the school called Flavia, who is Irish Brazilian. Flavia also sees Nishat's designs at a wedding that the two of them are at at the beginning of the novel. And she decides that she also wants to set up a henna business for her TY mini company. That was an aspect of the book that I really didn't enjoy. I fully agree with Nishat that that was an aspect of cultural appropriation that I really didn't enjoy. And it really didn't gel well with me. But I do see why it was necessary to put it into the plot. Because without it, we wouldn't have had the plot develop in the way that it did. And the way that it did develop is that Nishat gets a really, really strong crush on Flavia. And quite a lot of the book is about them kind of coming to terms with their feelings for each other, coming to terms with their sexuality and discovering who they are. Around the beginning of the book, Nishat has actually come out to her parents as a lesbian and they don't particularly take it as well as she would have hoped. It's not that they're screaming at her. It's not that they're disowning her. It's just that they're completely silent and that they're not really interacting with the news at all. Something that Nishat really wasn't expecting to happen. I feel like this kind of homophobia that you get from your parents when you've come out and they're not expecting the news, they don't really know how to react to it. It's definitely something that happens and it's something that puts a lot of people off telling their friends and family who they really are. This is something that I think Adiba really dealt with well in this book here. Another aspect of the book that I really did not enjoy was the Islamophobia. That was also pretty difficult to read. I am not sure if in the book Nishat was a hijabi, but you can definitely see that there are aspects of the book where Nishat is the outsider in her community and her family are the outsiders in the community. And she is definitely treated a lot differently to any of the other girls that she goes to school with. Not just because she's a lesbian, that's completely outside of the point. It's more so because she's of a different faith. The Muslim community in Ireland is actually quite small. So I feel like this kind of homophobia and this Islamophobia that Nishat is experiencing in both aspects of her life it's something that is definitely portrayed well and it's something that is definitely realistic about this book. Something else that I really enjoyed here is that it's set in Ireland and that was something that was just so basic for the enjoyment for me. I loved that I had recognised where she was walking along Grafton Street. I love that I have also gone on dates to Gino's Ice Cream Parlour in Dublin City. I love that I knew what she was talking about when she's talking about the junior search and when she's talking about transition year. Even though I also really enjoyed that Idiva does explain what the junior search and what transition year is for readers who aren't coming from Ireland and who haven't experienced those terms before. I felt like that is something that a lot of authors kind of need to do 
because when you bring your book to a wider audience, there are some kind of terms that will get a little bit lost in translation. Another thing that felt kind of realistic is Flavia's cousin's name. So Flavia's cousin's name is China, spelled C-H-Y-N-A. I have lived in Dublin for five years. I lived in Dublin for five years before I came here to Germany. And I can tell you, that is the kind of name that a person in Dublin would give their child. That kind of little realistic detail. It was something that I wasn't expecting, but it was so realistic. And that genuinely did make me enjoy the book a lot more. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I didn't really want Nishat and Flavia to end up together by the end of this book. Mainly because I didn't see Flavia having a lot of respect for Nishat, not only in the cultural appropriation, but there were so many times throughout the book that I felt they were a little bit mismatched and I wouldn't have wanted to see the two of them together by the end. But I did really enjoy reading this book. I really loved kind of reliving my time in transition year. I also kind of loved going back to when you've gotten your first crush on somebody and when you've kind of got that flush of first love. It was something that was so well done here in this book. I cannot give it anything better than five stars. The next book that I am going to talk about is one that is written in verse and it is Here is the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. Sarah Crossan is kind of more known as a children's author. She's written quite a lot of YA books. In particular, the ones that I have enjoyed are One and Toffee. But this one is her first adult novel and this one is about Anna who works in insurance of some kind. I think it's a life insurance broker. And she gets a call one day to say that one of her clients, Connor, has passed away. The problem here is that Connor's wife is the one that calls in to tell Anna that Connor has passed away. But Anna has been having an affair with him for the last three years. It's kind of difficult to talk about this book and say positive things about it when the main character is such a wholly unlikable person. I really think if Anna and I had met in real life, I genuinely don't think that we would get on at all. Something that I did really enjoy about this book is it doesn't condone cheating. It doesn't say this is definitely the road that you want to go down. You definitely want to have the thrill and the excitement of being the other woman and stealing glances at each other and sneaking away to hotels to be with each other for the evening. Sarah Crossan doesn't portray it like that at all. And she gives you a much more realistic account of what it's like to be the other woman and especially what it's like to be the other woman when your partner has passed away and you can't share this grief with anybody because it's such a traumatic experience for anybody but it's made even worse when there's nobody that you can share this experience with as i've said anna's not a very likable character and i didn't really find her to have a lot of redeemable qualities there's a lot of things that she does in this book that are pretty inexcusable and i'm not just talking about being the other woman with a guy who's in a relationship she also attends the funeral when Mark has pretty explicitly told her that her presence would not be wanted on the day. She constantly contacts him and bombards him to say, has he mentioned anything about me before he died? Had you guys talked about me? Was there anything that he had brought up? The kind of obsessive woman who knows that there's no kind of positive to their relationship that there's no positive outcome going to happen it felt like she was constantly waiting for connor to leave rebecca who is his wife but the moment was just never going to come i don't think he was ever going to leave rebecca had he survived she also kind of gets this obsession with rebecca and takes on their case as a kind of not a favor but she takes it on as a very kind of close contact she goes to Connor and Rebecca's house quite regularly to help Rebecca to kind of pack up Connor's belongings and to help her move forward with her loss. And that was something that I found absolutely terrifying and a little bit unhinging. I'm going to talk about the ending and make it as spoiler free as I can, but I didn't really enjoy it. I felt like the ending was kind of abrupt and that it just ended and it felt like there was more to come but I don't know if it would have been a positive ending or if it would have been something a lot more negative and that they um Anna and her husband Paul needed to discuss things further if they needed to see where their relationship can go from here it's definitely an ending that will make you think about what's going to happen 
but for me it wasn't a very satisfactory one. I found it really hard to connect with this book, especially because I'm a very character driven reader and I couldn't connect with the character in this book. But what I will say is because of the format that it's written in, it's written in verse, it makes it quite a speedy read and you will get through it quite quickly. I think I got through it in about a day and a half. For that reason, I think I'm gonna have to give this one a three star reading. And so we're on to the final book. And this one is Circle of Friends by Maeve Binchy. This was the first of Maeve Binchy's books that I ever, ever read. I had been told by a couple of people that she was a really great author. I'd heard some good things about her other books, but this was the first one that I ever went into. I got an audio copy of it from my local library and I think it took me about three or four days to get through it because it is quite a chunky book. The book itself is about 700 or so pages, but the audiobook that I listened to was about 16 and a half hours of listening. I listened to it on 1.75 speed, so it took me about two or three days to get through it because I only listened while I was at work or while I was at my desk or whatever. I loved it though. I absolutely loved it. I completely see what the Maeve Binchy hype is about and I am absolutely on board the train by now. So in this book, we are following Benny and Eve, who are two very close friends living in a suburb of Dublin called Knock Glen, and this is a fictional suburb. You first meet them when they are about 10 years old and living in Knock Glen. Benny's family are quite middle class, quite well to do, and Eve is an orphan who has been taken in by the local nuns and raised by them. We kind of fast forward about eight years to when the girls are 18 and Benny is about to go to university in Dublin. It's explained that Eve is not going to go to university, but instead she is also going to go to Dublin. Here she's going to take a secretarial course and she's going to live with another order of nuns, that the nuns that she grew up with know that are in the locality where Benny and Eve would be going to. When they get to Dublin, there is a tragic accident that both of the girls witness and one of the girls is actually involved in, and that flips everything on its head. Through this, Eve is actually given the opportunity to also attend University College Dublin, and they interact with quite a lot of other students that are there. Nan is portrayed in the book as a very beautiful girl, but her family life is quite tormented, and she also meets Jack whose father is a doctor and he's quite well-to-do, one of the most well-to-do students that she would have known in her time there. There's a lot of kind of moments where you feel like Benny doesn't fit in here. For example, there's a dance that happens about a third of the way through the book and you get the feeling that Benny is very much sitting on the outside of the precipice and doesn't interact with the other students as well as anybody else in their circle would have done so. Throughout the book, there is also quite a lot of romantic entanglements between the members of the group. Um, Benny falls in love with Jack, Nan falls for another person in their group called Simon. I didn't love the outcome of that relationship. There's quite a difficult moment in the book where Nan falls pregnant on her first time having sex with Simon and he just completely disregards of her. And she basically has to find another way to have this child, not have it out of wedlock and not bring any kind of shame on her family and on herself. Did not love that reaction in the book and it really brought Nan down in my estimation of her as a character. This book was written in around 1990 or so and it's set in the 1950s, 1960s Ireland, but Honestly, it feels super timeless. It could have genuinely been set in the 1990s, in a time before telephones and before the internet and before Facebook and WhatsApp and Skype and everything. It's a very timeless book and it's one that I'm definitely happy that I started with Maeve's catalogue from. I cannot wait to see what else she has in store for me. I'm just completely devastated that Maeve passed away in 2012. So when I'm finished with that, there won't be anything new to discover. So those are some of the best Irish books that I have read in the last couple of weeks. What Irish books have you read recently and really enjoyed? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.